with the Nintendo Switch Lite coming out soon and not supporting HD Rumble, and the fact that most games don't even utilize it, is HD Rumble basically dead now, if it wasn't already? I only really know a few games that use it, and only a few of those, I'd say, even use it in a good way. In this video, I will show you how lockpicking works in Skyrim using HD Rumble. We will also look at an interview detailing how game developers actually create HD Rumble features in their games. But let me know in the comments what other games you've played that use HD Rumble in a way that enhances your gameplay experience. I think it's clear that 1-2-Switch and Super Mario Party probably use the Joy-Cons to their full potential, but what other games do that? So to start, it's actually really easy to utilize HD Rumble in developing a game. Nintendo Soup was able to interview indie developer Daylight Studios on their game Holy Potatoes, We're in Space, where they detailed how HD Rumble works with Nintendo's dev kit. Admittedly, I haven't played the game, so can't speak to how well this feature is implemented. Because this was only one question of the interview, I will read it here. If you want to read the full article that goes into more details on the game, the link is in the description. So Nintendo Soup asks, So what console exclusive can the Switch players expect? The HD Rumble. That is something we added only in the end, but it really helps. We wanted to do it, Rumble, on the PlayStation as well, but it didn't happen. For Switch it was better, and it's crazy also. For the rumble feature, I can use any kind of sound effect I have in the game and generate the rumble effect, so it will actually follow the exact wave pattern. It is so easy to use, I can just input a sound effect and output the rumble. So what we did was we had over 100 sound effects in the game. Obviously we are not doing rumble for everything, but we took all the sound effects of the game, the weapon fire and everything, and ran it through a script that converts it into rumble. We actually put in everything, but we realized it was too much. We cut down, and we have a little bit left, but we still think it's a bit too much. What's interesting here is just how easy it is to develop for HD Rumble in any game on Nintendo Switch, and how quickly it can be implemented. So what gives? Why don't more games do it then? Switch Lite is now coming out soon, which should capture a lot of the younger audience and others reluctant to switch over from their beloved 3DS's, but that doesn't support HD Rumble, so is the dream dead? I imagine that some HD Rumble features, like the lockpicking in Skyrim, are a bit more difficult than that indie game, but the facts are pretty straightforward here. It's basically a drag and drop feature and very few games, including Nintendo's big IPs, even use it. And furthermore, the ones that do hardly even use it in an interesting way. I mean Mario Odyssey apparently used it and I couldn't even tell, and I only know that because I read about it. For those of you at this point who are saying, okay dude, but who cares, it's just a gimmick. Trust me, I was with you when I heard Nintendo first mention HD Rumble in their reveal of the Switch. I was like, what does HD Rumble even mean? And even after seeing 1-2 Switch and how well that utilizes the HD Rumble and just the Joy-Cons in general, I still didn't think it was worth it enough for me to buy that game just to experience it. So for me, I've really only experienced one incredible example of HD Rumble in a Switch game, and that game is... Skyrim for Nintendo Switch, the best version of Skyrim. So if you haven't played Skyrim on Switch, that's fair. The game is... Holy shit, 8 years old? And it's been re-released to death, so much that fans meme about it all the time, and we even got a version on Amazon Alexa. Fush, I didn't quite catch that. Fush, Your shout echoes all the way to Sovngarde. Which I thought that trailer was a joke at E3, but it's actually real. But for me, this was my first time experiencing Skyrim, let alone an Elder Scrolls game. Portability was fantastic, it looks spectacular, and it includes all the DLC, and the game even loads faster than the PS4 version, but one thing stood out to me and that is lockpicking, because of the HD rumble. So everyone probably knows this at this point, but you have 5 levels of locks in Skyrim. So from easiest to hardest, you have novice, apprentice, adept, expert, and master. So I think generally people would lockpick by just wiggling it ever so slightly and turning the key to see if it worked while trying to not break the pick. I'd say this does require a little skill but mostly it's just guessing where to turn it 
and seeing if it works, and then adjusting accordingly. Not saying there is anything wrong with this, but to me the Switch version is just so much more satisfying. Although it admittedly probably isn't as realistic as it would be in the real world, but I don't know, I'm not an expert lock picker. Lock Pikmin? Pikmin. Pikmin 4 confirmed. But because this is hard to explain, let me start by showing an example of the Adept lock. So if we zoom in on this spectrum meter here, you can see the frequency and decibels of the vibrations from my recording of the Switch Joy-Con. You can not only visually see where to turn the pick, but you can also hear the difference too. You won't hear it as much when you're actually playing it because I actually enhanced the audio here so you could hear it, but you still hear it a little bit. So you can see here that the difference is really just the decibels of the vibration and maybe the frequency ever so slightly. Well, let's just take a moment here and just appreciate how amazing this is, how much this could bring to games, how something so small makes lockpicking so much more enjoyable in my eyes, and that it requires a lot more skill. I had my brother try this, who's played Skyrim on Xbox, and he didn't like it, and I think that's obviously because he wasn't used to it and he just couldn't figure it out. But it took me a while too, and if you go slow enough and practice enough, you're gonna get good at it, and then you'll hardly ever break a lockpick, and you'll be able to do master locks with your eyes closed. So going back to the levels of locks, you can see Adept had quite a few vibrations, and Novice actually only has three, which makes sense as it's the easiest lock, but Expert and Master locks really up the ante. Take a look at how many more vibrations there are, and how slow you have to go to even notice the more subtle differences. Yeah, so you can see just how hard the master locks were and I had to kind of go back and forth a few times to figure them out. But once you get good at doing this, it becomes a breeze and every time you come to a lock and see that it's an expert or master lock, you'll go, I got this, no problem. So this again is great and all, but Switch Lite won't support this feature. Other games hardly use this feature. I even have controllers like the Power A that don't even have vibration. Not to mention how much cost this adds to the controller. So was this feature really doomed from the start? Let me know what you guys think about this and what great experiences you've had with HD Rumble and other games on Nintendo Switch.